All right, so here I am in the car, pulled out just so that we can see the screen a little bit better. I'm gonna show you some of the things about the screen that are interesting about self-drive. I'm gonna tap on the menu here, and um, you can see autopilot, and you can see some of the interesting settings here. A lot of these are in beta. Auto steer, navigate on autopilot, these are all on. Full self-driving beta. And you can see here that there's some conditions. If autopilot disables five times due to improper use, it will no longer operate. This vehicle has had not had any such events, so that's pretty cool. Full self-driving profile, chill, average, or assertive. So you can see here in average, it says it will perform medium follow distance and may perform rolling stops. This was in the news this week uh, because Tesla is actually, regulators aren't happy with this, and so Tesla's actually removing this in the latest software update. So I'll be getting that software update any day now, and I'm sad to see that that's going. Um, I think it's a good feature. It's a feature that uh, acts very human in my experience. It does it in very safe conditions only. Assertive, uh, it's a little bit more lane changes, will not exit passing lanes and, and may perform rolling stops. I leave it on average. There's other controls here too. Um, in fact, uh, this one's fun, customized navigating on autopilot. You can see here lane speed-based lane changes, Mad Max. <laughs> I keep it on mild. I don't like lane, a lot of fast lane changes, but uh, anyway, you can see some of the some of the fun in these settings. So lots and lots of controls, just like a computer would be would have uh, for this. I've opted into almost everything because you know that's the whole fun of this technology, right? It's to, to play with this stuff. All right, so back to the map mode. Um, I am going to drive to work and back today. I'm gonna to be going to Walmart Labs, that's my office. And uh, it is going to map this, there it is. It is 4.3 miles here. And um, we're gonna get started. And we're, I'm gonna go ahead and mount the camera for safety. And we're gonna to try to get to work completely self-driving and, and hope we get there without any uh, disengagements on my behalf. So let's take a look. All right, I pulled up into this uh, neighborhood just to start the journey here. This isn't my neighborhood, but it's nearby one. And it's going to make a call. I just want to show some of the navigation before we get started. Um, so here, I'm in a cul-de-sac. Um, these are, uh, this is a subdivision. There's no lane markings or center line or anything like that. There's cars parked on the side. Autopilot uh, is something right now, or the self-driving is something that will not turn on immediately. So this is part of the beta. So you have to kind of, has to get its bearings, I think, a little bit. This is what it sees. Um, this is really interesting. This is a visualization you can see here. It sees around the car. This is all the, the, the cameras that are in the car uh, sensing and recognizing objects. And then this display is just sort of a graphic representation of the important things that it wants me to know about, at least, that it sees two cars here and it sees a car parked over there and it understands the, the road uh, based on, on what it can see. And you can see it kind of grays out in certain areas beyond the limits of its vision, right? So this is really interesting because it gives you a sense of what the car is sensing and is feeding into the uh, the neural net, the artificial intelligent uh, driving algorithm. It also has this wiggly little path here, and you can see it's trying to, it's sort of forming a, a plan that it's going to be driving straight here, and that's the path that it's sort of picking. So I'm going to, actually, I'll just leave this in full sc screen. The icon for full self-driving just appeared. I'm going to go ahead and double tap on the stock here. That is immediately going to activate it, and you can see that the car has just taken over. Um, speed is set to 25 miles per hour. It turned the blinker on. It is going to go ahead and turn here. I have no feet on the pedals, nor am I holding the wheel. The car does want me to... Oh, it's cutting that. I don't think that's very safe. The car does uh, want to sense that I am uh, paying attention. So it does look for a little bit of resistance on the steering wheel. It wants my hands on the wheel at all times. So I will be resting my hands on the wheel. You can see here I'm going to stop, and it's kind of nervously taking a left here. But it did it. There's a car parked here. Oncoming car as well. It's going to turn left here. It's kind of hogging the aisle. I don't love that. Luckily, the car behind me is not turning right, so he won't mind. 
but you can see here uh, all the cross traffic you can see that the that it does sense the uh, traffic lights here that are red um, it, it will recognize a green arrow and go on that arrow look at now it sees that there's a car behind the car behind me I can't even see that in my mirrors so that's pretty amazing what the car can see it can see beyond uh, human human capabilities which is pretty cool um, computers very fast it, it's doing a lot of it's doing computer rec uh, vision and, and recognition and rendering of all these things in real time I mean it's pretty impressive to be honest all right green light car is slowly pulling out okay it's just scolded me for not paying atten enough attention it has set the speed limit to 50 I just cranked it up a little bit faster we're on a divided highway now it is accelerating we're at 54 miles an hour very human like right it's following this path really well coming up on a stoplight which is green it sees that we're gonna breeze right through that again I'm just touching the wheel so that it knows I'm paying attention there is an in in car camera right here above the uh, the mirror and that is also monitoring me so the the AI computer vision technology is monitoring me to make sure that I am not holding my phone and I think that generally that my face is forward and that I am paying attention and it will nag me if it sees that I am not doing that and that is uh, that's a very common technology um, the GM Super Cruise, the, the, like the Cadillacs might have, uh, they use that, uh, in, in fact, they use that even more than Tesla does to monitor driver attention. So they don't require that you have your hands on the wheel at all. They do everything through the camera and they will actually look at your eyes and see that you are uh, fully um, uh, paying attention to the, to the road. Tesla right now, they want both. They want hand on the wheel and they want eyes on the road. Uh, you know, the, the full self-driving beta has been out for six months or so. Uh, I've had it for one month. Um, there's about 60,000 cars that are in this beta program uh, out of 2 million Teslas sold. Uh, so I'm, I'm lucky to have one. But in that period of the last six months, Tesla has said that there have been no crashes uh, while in full self-driving. Uh, I'm sure there's been fender benders and little accidents here and there um, because the car does do stupid things, definitely does stupid things. I mean, you, it's not fully, it's not at like level four, level five autonomy yet. It, it does require driver monitoring and the ability for me to take over at any moment. And I do that and I have done that. And on a drive like this, I would expect to do so maybe once or twice. Um, so far, so good. It's coming out in a little hot here. And it was, did you see what it was doing? It was veering towards the center lane. I knew it would correct itself, so I didn't intervene. Uh, and it did, but that was a little awkward. That was a little weird, right? Shouldn't have done that. That's pretty unusual. That's the only time I've ever seen it actually do that in the months that I've been driving. All right, so um, we're gonna be going through underneath this underpass and taking a left, and then we're gonna be taking another right into uh, my office's parking lot go back into this visualization look how well it's rendering that in front of us showed his brake lights showed he, he was kind of at an angle showing lane markings it's doing a really good job of interpreting its surroundings and what's interesting that uh, something that Tesla does that no other autonomous car company is doing say so this is wrong this is wrong it's in the wrong lane and look it corrected so <laughs> It's done that before. It's a little funny. Um, that would be annoying to drivers around you for sure. But you know, I'm a beta tester, so I'm just gonna, unless I'm in danger or endangering other or other drivers, I'm gonna kind of let it do what it does and and uh, and see. And that also helps me earn trust in the car and and its behavior and what it's gonna do. So the left turn is actually the next one. So you can see here it's turning already into that left turn lane. It's turning on the blinker. I've not had to intervene yet, which is good. Uh, 
But uh, as I was saying, Tesla is the only car manufacturer to use vision sensors only and computer vision only to self-drive and to make sense of its awareness. Other uh, autonomous cars, whether it's the Google uh, self-driving uh, test or I, I believe uh, some of the other cars like Mercedes, they use LiDAR, they use more expensive um, 3D mapping sensors. Um, Tesla decided early on that they didn't want to go that route. They felt that those sensors were expensive and uh, they, they saw that computer vision technology was getting better and they felt like, well, if humans can drive with two eyes and, and vision only, surely we can teach a car to do the same. Uh, when you see these visualizations, I think you can get a good sense that that was a good bet, that, that the cars are able to sense the world in 3D uh, really well. I'm going to turn up the speed a little bit to 40. Slow around these curves up here. We will be taking a right turn into my parking lot coming up. Ironically, this is the very first time I have gone to my office in the year that I've worked with Walmart Labs uh, due to COVID. <laughs> but I need to go and pick up my tax documents, and so they wanted me to do that at the office. So, okay. So, I'll have my self driving car take us there. Okay. And here we are. You can see that it does sense these speed bumps and it senses these trailers. It takes those a little bit hotter than I would. My car's been lowered, the springs are lowered. So, you know, I tend to, you know, drive very, very slowly over these types of things. But hey, car did a good job. And here we are driving in a parking lot. Uh, it's not great in parking lots, but it's doing fine. It's sensing the edges here. Um, it's going to make a left turn here. It's doing a pretty good job. Eventually, this technology is going to have to get to the point where the car will be able to find a parking spot and park itself. And so it would be able to drop you off, and then and then the car would go off into the parking lot on its own and find a parking spot and park until you summon it, and then it would unpark and go find you and pick you up. And how far away are we from that? You know, I don't know. Maybe a, maybe a couple years. Okay, it says autopilot navigation complete. Plus, press accelerator to resume. So here we are. That's pretty cool. I'm actually want to go a little bit further. So I'm going to go ahead and self-drive us uh, the rest of the way. But you can see zero intervention, some funkiness, definitely. But uh, that was not a terrible drive. It wasn't an amazing drive. Um, you can see that there's a ways to go with this tech, but still pretty darn impressive. And here is my office with nobody in the parking lot. Hopefully somebody will be there to let me in. I actually don't know. I have a badge. I've never used it. What does that say? Walmart parking. Oh, yay. Oh, well, that's me. There we are. This is We're back in the park in the park mode. All right. See you in a sec, and we'll drive home and see how that works for us. Okay, got my W-2 form. Only one person in the office, which was the uh, admin at the front desk. She's a very lonely person. Okay, so here we are. We're going to try to drive home now. Tesla has a nice little gesture for home. All you have to do is just swipe down from the Navigate, and it will route me back home. Autopilot is on. So our full self-driving, rather, is on. Let's uh, let's get on the road, and we'll turn that on and see how she does. Again, we're waiting for that little icon to appear that tells us that uh, full self-driving. There, you saw the visualization, too. Okay, perfect. Let's start here. Double tap. Active. Very confident left turn there. Uncontrolled intersection. So she is peeking in both directions, as am I, to make sure this is safe, and it does look safe. And holy cow. Okay, there was oncoming traffic, but she pulled out. Okay, not bad. Crank up the speed a little bit. She tends to lock into the actual speed limit, and I think that's probably part of the beta for safety, and that's fine. 
you can override it to a point. These little thumbnails here. Taking these curves at 40 miles an hour. Reasonably in the center of the lane. section. She should merge into that right turn lane, which she failed to do. She is now crossing a solid. And here we are. Oh, we just got a green arrow. Fantastic. Look at that. And now we are in the wrong lane. And now she is getting out of that lane. I did not have to intervene. Again, bad choice on the car on behalf of the car. Um, I, w I wasn't looking at the screen, but it must have plotted incorrectly that and thought that maybe that lane w continued on when it didn't. Um, that is something I would expect that their software is going to improve on over time. You can see here now a, a nice, confident path forwards straight in this lane. So I know what the car uh, is expected to do here. Beautiful day here in Carlsbad, 65 degrees, sunny, not bad for early February. It's always beautiful at this time of the year. Wheel straight, straightening out from that previous maneuver. Nice acceleration. Uh, she's a little slow here. Come on, let's crank it up. She probably senses this traffic ahead of me has stopped, so she's being a little bit slow, aware of of other lane speeds. It's certainly better than just like hammering and then heartbreaking. Uh, the car is definitely getting better at that over time. I'm going to override, override for a second, and let's, let's, uh, let's take a little detour really quickly and let's go to Legoland, because it's right up here to the right. The reason I want to do this is there is a, uh, there's a traffic circle up here, so, you know, let's put her through the, uh, through her paces and see how she handles this, uh, this traffic circle and then we'll get back to driving home. See here, she needs to make this right turn. She is moving very fast, very fast into that right turn lane. Ay, wee, yay, yay, yay. <laughs> Again, I did not intervene. She's taking a right arrow. This is the traffic circle here. This is the GIA, the General Logical Institute of America. She should turn, stay to the left here. Okay, she is. She's entering the traffic circle. She's turning on her, oh goodness. Okay, that was weird. She stopped at the yield when she did not need to. Okay, she's acting really dumb right now. I just intervened by putting my foot on the accelerator. Okay, that was not great. I did not grab the wheel, but I'm sure that those other drivers were looking at me like I was a uh, confused driver. There are a lot of confused drivers coming to Legoland, let's be honest. see the map here you can see this is actually Legoland Park so you can actually see all of the walking paths here
again because it's using Google Maps. So Google Maps has a really good good source here. I'm going to take over because I am going to turn around here. And it's faster for me to just take over than tell her that. However, this would be a great place to cancel my destination and tell it I want to go home. Okay, and she seems ready to do that. Crank up that speed. She's approaching an uncontrolled right turn here. She is taking a look, I presume. I certainly am. Looks good. She's pulling in. That was pretty good. Fairly confident. This is a 15. Actually, I'm going to dial this down a little bit. So this is interesting. The car says is this is a 25. The road is painted 15. <laughs> The car has decided it's going to use 25 instead of what it sees, which is 15. That's interesting. So, you know, the computer vision does read speed limits. Now, it might not be reading the 15 off the, the road. It definitely reads them off signs. And maybe that's what's happening here. Maybe that's just a feature that hasn't been launched. But if there was a sign that said 15, this would definitely drop to 15. And uh, the other thing that's interesting is oftentimes it will read road, like painted signs on the road, it would visualize those here. It's not doing that. So that tells me that they're, um, that they don't have that programmed into the car yet. So that's fine. Okay, I have a green arrow. She should go. She's nagging me. Okay. Well, she did a good job there. Read that, read that light and took it. She saw that red light faster than I did, and she immediately started slowing down. That was, that was pretty cool. The camera is up here, so it's a little bit higher and more forward than I am as the driver's sitting back. Um, so it's really interesting sometimes when the car sees things that, uh, that you can't see as well. And you can really see that in the visualization sometimes. She's decided to move into the left lane. Um, not sure why. There is a left turn coming up ahead. Uh, but it's still a ways off. But I think that she is programmed to make early moves when she can. And so she probably, you know, the, the neural net probably just made that, that call, that decision to go ahead and uh, get into that lane now versus uh, fighting over, you know, position in that lane later on. So always interesting off the line. Uh, I had a car right next to me. Um, Teslas have very fast acceleration because of their electric motors. It's really fun to see the full self-driving beating people off the line regularly, and it just did that. Uh, part of it is that the car just reacts so quickly to the stoplights. It sees a green, and it goes. It goes. like uh, So it's a little bit faster reaction, I think, than um, human drivers in certain situations, especially distracted drivers these days with their phones or whatever. However, that does introduce a little bit of risk because it's, you know, that could be uh, uh, an example of the car behaving in a way that other drivers ne don't necessarily expect, and perhaps that could create unsafe situations. And where we've seen that with this car is definitely certain heartbreaking scenarios where if there was a car that was tailing us, or if we pulled up at a, at a light and it was in and the car behind us was expecting us to go and turn, but we didn't or we hesitated, that's a chance for them to, to whack, whack us from behind because they expected us to go and we didn't, we hesitated. We acted like, like a, a, a robot, not like a human would in that situation. Um, 
that kind of stuff really interests me because I feel like that is going to be a uh, an important thing for the technology to overcome and get that humanness uh, into the into the driving algorithms. And that's actually another reason why I think the rolling stops on reds or on stops when you're turning right makes sense because humans do that. They call it a California stop for a reason. I'm in California. That's how people drive. So if the car is now going to be following the letter of the law instead of actual uh, human behavior or expectations, is that actually creating an unsafe situation? And um, I think that that is going to be a really interesting subject for the regulators to, to deal with uh, over time. Same thing with speed limits. You know, driving, uh, driving 55 uh, on the highway when the flow of traffic might be uh, 65, right? Is it unsafe to follow, uh, to drive uh, 55, right? If you're not with the flow of traffic. So it's going to be really interesting to see how, how those things evolve uh, with regulations. So look at this great visualization. Um, see this? There's some phantom recognition. Now there's a, it's an architectural feature over there for this subdivision. And it's like, sort of thinks that it might be a bus, but it's actually just a wall. So sometimes you do get some of those errors and you see that in the visualization and it was like flickering on and off. I think it's interesting. Um, it kind of shows sometimes the limits of the computer vision technology. I do expect that to get better over time. Tesla is building a huge data center, something called Project Dojo, um, not out yet. Uh, this is supposed to be a, a, a quantum leap uh, in terms of their um, their uh, training of their neural net, their visual training of their neural net. They use all their all their cars, their fleet of cars like mine, to see things in the world, and it feeds that back uh, to Tesla. Tesla then crunches all of that visual processing, gets better, creates a better self-driving algorithm pushes that algorithm to the entire fleet. So all the Teslas on the road are training the neural net on what it what they observe and how to react to those things and recognize them. So uh, that is expected to get better and better at a um, logarithmic pace. Um, and so I think in the next couple of years, we might be really, really surprised at how well this uh, computer vision is at recognizing objects. And there are certain objects that are important that it's not really good at. Objects in the middle of the street that shouldn't be there. Uh, a plastic bag floating in your path. Do you run over that? Do you swerve around it? Do you hard brake? The car needs to get good at these types of things. Okay. Uncontrolled left turn into my street. Oncoming traffic. Holy cow. My foot is on hovering over the brake and it did a good job there. It waited for traffic to pass, and it pulled in, did a really, really good job there. And here it's pulled into my little circle. It's approaching my destination, my house here on the corner, 50 feet. And it opened the garage door for me. And there goes the door, all automatically. So can't drive me into the garage yet. That's gonna have to come a little bit later, so for now, I will take control. Oh, it folds the mirrors in automatically. That's all GPS based. So it knows where I am and it's gonna open that door and fold those mirrors in. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed. I thought that was a pretty successful drive uh, without interventions. Some dicey things for sure, but it gives you a sense of what this, uh, this can do. And I'll make more of these in the future for the sake of posterity. Thanks, everybody. All right, back in the car. We're going to drive around the neighborhood a little bit and then go pick up uh, my daughter at school. You can see her, this great backup camera, side cameras. You also saw that it triggered the garage door automatically based on GPS. Just some nice little convenience features. A lot of water.
All right, so let's pick a destination. We've got some interesting um, communities and roads around here. I'm going to go ahead and randomly pick a spot over here. Actually, let's pick something a little bit deeper. Let's try this one. Car has built in um, LTE. Um, service at this particular spot is sometimes spotty. Okay, that involves some turns, but. All right, well, let's let's go ahead and give it a shot. Here we are. Uh, it says the icon is, is ready. You can see the visualization is ready to go. Double tap, back into self-driving. It says autopilot creeping forwards. It's going to make a left turn here. It is checking for traffic. I have a hard time seeing the traffic to my right. There's a car coming. I would not go. Okay, I'm going to intervene there. That would have not been safe. All right. Not a great start to this drive. there for a second. Not sure what that was about. There's a motorcycle behind me. I want to be sensitive to the car doing anything crazy. All right, it is taking a left pretty confidently. You can see no lane markings on this road whatsoever, not even a curb, not even a curb. It's doing a really good job of sensing, as you can see here the limits of the road. It's putting me pretty much just to the right of the center line of this road, even though it's not marked. So it's driving in a very human way. We're coming up on an intersection here where um, we have a stop, they do not. We have somebody crossing the road here. I don't know if you can see this, but it actually shows the dog and the person. It actually visualizes both of those things. And it even highlighted the dog in blue for a second, which told me that the car, anytime it highlights something in blue or something that it is of, it is concerned is in our path. And so it actually saw that the dog was in our path and was letting me know that that, that was the case, uh, which is good. So that's confidence inducing for sure. Look at how it's cutting that corner right there. It probably would have behaved differently if there was a car there. But again, it's driving in a very human way. Again, the, the right turn that it just made there was very, very smooth. It's doing a great job navigating. Now we have curbs, um, no center line still, but it's doing a pretty good job. And here we are at the destination. All right, good job. Now, time to pick up Claire at school. So the car is continuing along because I I've, I've, haven't given it a destination. What will it do here? Oh, it's going to turn right. Let's stop. Let's stop. Let's stop. Okay. Let's plug in. Uh, so she goes to Valley Middle School. So I'll just type in Valley. There's Valley Middle School. Not too far from here. Pretty simple. Ready to go. Beep. 
again, you can see this girl, and sometimes it's visualizing dogs with her. There's two dogs. Not perfect, but pretty good. All right, so it's sitting here, ready to turn left with the blinker on, and it's not doing anything. Autopilot creeping forward, check for visibility. That's what it says, but it's not. It's not doing anything. So I'm going to tap the accelerator pedal. I'm going to tap it again, hold it. It's kind of a neat thing. It's like you can kind of push the car along. As soon as I let go of the accelerator pedal, though, it slows down. All right, now it's getting its footing. Turn the speed limit up. So that wasn't so good either. I don't know what it was doing there. Left turn, looks clear. Uh oh, uh, car's coming on my right. Okay, it's waiting for that car. All right, that time it did a good job. That was very good. Everybody's out walking their dog today, right now. Going up a hill. Oh, a little phantom brake there. Not sure why. That is a problem. Some more dogs. <laughs> We were going up over a hill. Obviously, that does uh, visibility is occluded. Um, it might have created a little bit of um, risk in the system in the AI, where it, it really did not have the high sense of confidence in its surroundings that it normally does, and that could have led to just a little bit of a, led to that to that braking. It's it, you know nobody's really sure. Phantom braking is definitely a known issue with self driving. And it's not just Tesla. All self-driving cars are suffering with this problem. Here we are at an intersection. Traffic is clearing. It's waiting our turn. It did wait our turn. There's a fellow Tesla. Hey. Did a good job there. You can see here it's rendering trash cans that it sees. Certain things it, see, it recognizes and will visualize. Certain things it does not. That's a trailer. It visualized that as a truck. Okay. Here, it sees the stop sign. It does visualize the stop sign. And it puts a line here as well. And we are creeping up to that line. This is a very tough one to see. We are clear. Oh, there's a flagman ahead with a stop sign. What will it do? What will it do? What will it do? What will it do? He says to stop. I'm going to go ahead and take over. What is it visualizing? Okay, I can see here it is visualizing a stop sign in the middle of the road. That is the stop sign that he is holding. And it shows a person and it shows cones. It sees all of this important stuff, and that is great. If I put on self-driving right now, it would probably just do fine. Why not? Let's give it a shot. Okay, so it's self-driving is back on. <laughs> it did really good. And it's moving back into my lane. Hey, all right. You know, it probably could have handled that entire situation by itself. Now, here's a car that's in my path. Okay, it went fine. You can see more cones here. It sees these, visualizes them as cones. Oh, FedEx truck in the way. It is driving around that. It drove into oncoming traffic to get around that obstacle. So, very wisely done by the uh, self-driving technology.
at this. It's driving around this this car. Absolutely incredible. Just drove completely around that car in oncoming traffic with confidence. That was very impressive. All right, I'm taking over. We've reached our destination. Um, I'm going to come up here and park. And I would say that was a successful test drive.